What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner. We're on week 16 without a haircut and today I decided to make a video about how you can avoid getting sued on your dropshipping store. Now as scary as this sounds and as unrealistic as it does sound it, it really happens but it's pretty easy to prevent to be completely honest. Most of this stuff that I'm going to go over you can fix in five to ten minutes and it could save you millions of dollars. Now if that's not enough of an incentive for you to watch this video, I don't really know what is. And I'm just going to go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so first things first, I just kind of want to say a little disclaimer. I am not a lawyer. I do not pretend to be. I am not one who is qualified to give you legal advice and you really should seek further guidance if you are going to be performing any of the actions that I suggest you do in this video. I really don't think that I'm going to make like a complete guide here and there's definitely other ways that you could get sued. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so the first way that you may or may not get sued is through GDPR. Those that don't know, GDPR is an act that went in place a couple of years ago by the European Union, which basically protects the data of their residents. Now, this really doesn't apply to anything besides the EU, which is the European Union, which is like 19 countries in Europe, obviously. Um, however, we do have California who's following some similar guidelines. And if I had to guess, I would say that the rest of the world is kind of going to follow suit with their own version of the GDPR. So a couple of things that you should really be aware of as far as the GDPR relates to Shopify dropshipping is that one big thing on your checkout is that there's going to be a little like accept marketing checkbox for your customers to click when they're checking out on your website. You have to make sure that this box is not auto checked because it's against GDPR. And by default on your Shopify settings, this is going to be auto checked. So basically all you gotta do is go into your settings, go into your checkout and then unclick the auto check box. It takes 10 seconds, really easy. You're gonna get less emails because of it, but it's worth not getting sued. Another thing that's going to make you compliant with GDPR is adding a privacy policy to your website. Now Shopify can generate you a privacy policy and again this takes like 10 seconds. You literally just have to Google Shopify privacy policy generator and it'll do that for you. You have to make sure that this is visible on your website and basically what I do is just I put it in my footer menu and it's really important to have this and make sure it's visible. Another thing that you do need to do in order to be compliant with GDPR is you need to have an acceptance for cookies pop up that comes on your website whenever someone from the EU is visiting. Now there's plenty of apps out there that have cookie acceptance boxes but I think it's really really important to get a specific app that has one that just shows it to people in the EU because if someone from North Carolina goes on your website and they see a little pop up with a box and like they have to accept it to go on your website like I really have a strong feeling and I actually know because I've tested this that it's actually going to decrease your conversion rate so only show it when you need to and make sure that you get an app that has geographic targeting for the cookie acceptance pop up. In addition, there's a ton of like nitty gritty details when it comes to properly handling your customer's data legally through the GDPR guidelines. Now, I'm not going to explain all these nitty gritty details to you because frankly, I don't know if I can do it correctly and I don't want to be saying something that I'm not 100% positive about. So I highly recommend that you just check out the guidelines, especially if you're going to be selling your store, especially if you're going to be sending emails to your customers and basically just handling a large amount of customer data from Europe. All right, so the next thing is disability compliance. Now, no one knows about this. Seriously, like no one talks about this and it's, it's crazy. Like I remember finding this out maybe six months ago and it scared me. I can't say that word. It scared me. So basically disability compliance is a US law where all websites need to have standards and accessibility tools 
for people that are disabled. Like for example, people that are colorblind, people that have really bad vision, um, people that are blind blind, like your website needs to be able to compensate those visitors. So like I said, every website in the United States needs to follow these standards. And it's really messed up because if you search up disability compliance lawsuits, tons of people have gotten sued over this. And it's not even just the big guys, it's literally like mom and pop shops, they go out of business because their website wasn't compliant with disability accessibility. Now, that's pretty messed up to me and I really don't wanna be one of those horror stories, so I will recommend that you cough up the $5 a month for an accessibility app. I actually think that most of these are free, but because I really want to have something that doesn't you know, deter my conversion rate, I paid a little bit of money to have like a custom trigger and have it built into one of my menus as opposed to essentially just like having a box whenever you scroll through your website because I think that that's really going to decrease your conversion rate. Now, I believe there's at least two apps on the Shopify app store that allow you to do this and you can literally just search up accessibility to download these apps. This can literally avoid a multi-million dollar lawsuit by taking five minutes of your day to install an app. And again, I would really recommend that you do this. All right, so the next thing is copyright. Now, copyright is pretty obvious. I think we all got taught that about 150 times. Every time we wrote a research paper in school, uh, for some reason, we had a 30-minute talk with a librarian about copyright. So that's kind of implanted into my brain, but we didn't necessarily learn how to apply that to dropshipping because school doesn't really teach practical things. Anyway, I really, really, really recommend that if you are gonna be using other people's pictures and videos, you do it with extreme caution. Most people are not going to legally copyright their content. However, it happens and you can get sued and you can lose a lot of money. So definitely exercise caution and if you are going to be taking other people's content, which again, I don't recommend, then make sure that you're looking for smaller websites like bloggers or independent people or AliExpress suppliers or DHgate, Alibaba, just something where you're pretty confident that the people who own the rights to that content are not going to sue you. This is definitely just where it's up to your best discretion and I realize that it can be a pain in the ass to get good content that's not stolen. But I really, really recommend, especially if you are going to be scaling and driving a lot of traffic to your websites or your video ads, that you just exercise extreme caution when using other people's content. All right, so the next thing is trademark infringement. Now, this is kind of similar to copyright infringement, but according to a couple quick Google searches that I did before recording this video, they're completely different, but not really, but kind of. Okay, so trademark infringement means you can't necessarily use someone else's product name. For example, if you're selling fake AirPods, the AirPod design and actually selling AirPods isn't illegal to my knowledge. However, you can't call them AirPods. You gotta call them like earbud pros or something like that. Um, but there's some products where you can't really sell them because the design has been patented and this is honestly like a decent amount of winning drop shipping products because aliexpress suppliers don't really care they can't get in trouble and they'll just copy patented products all day long it's really important to kind of look it up and if you see like one dominant company in this niche whether it's on amazon or just anywhere online then it's definitely definitely recommended to exercise caution because that company can definitely sue your pants off all in all, just don't copy other people's names and really be cautious if you see a product and it only has one main competitor, like a, you know, a real company who's selling the product. All right, so the last thing is a little bit different than the previous reasons that we've gone over. However, I do think it's just as important, especially if you're located in the United States, and that is not paying sales and use tax on purchases from your state. If you're doing next to no sales and you don't necessarily need to worry about this but if you're doing like I would say a thousand bucks in profit a quarter 
then you definitely need to worry about paying sales and use tax. Now, you're not necessarily gonna get sued by the government, but they're gonna come after you with a pretty big bill and some late fee charges on top of that. So basically what you need to do is file with your state's secretary of state and essentially just get like a little, a little book of sales and use tax documents. Alternatively, you can also use TaxJar, which I use and it automates the entire process for you. I still think you need to register with the Secretary of State, but either way or not, just get someone to handle your sales and use tax, which basically just means you're paying like anywhere from 2.5 to 7.5% on people that have bought items from your state. Like if they live in North Carolina and I live in North Carolina, I'm obligated to pay a certain percentage of that revenue to the state and the local government. Don't you just love taxes? All right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I definitely think that it's super important to be aware of all of these things. And regardless of what I said today, I think it's super, super important to have an LLC or some other type of legal entity to protect you and separate yourself from your business because if you get sued then your business gets sued not you and they can't take away your house or your car or anything like that unless your llc owns it so definitely look into that definitely look into all the things that i've gone over and like i said this isn't a complete list so definitely just keep Keep on the lookout, make sure you don't lose a ton of money in a lawsuit, and you're probably going to be in a very, very good position. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I definitely appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments, or any videos that you would like to see me make. You just drop a comment below, and while you're down there, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.